Today I want to take a look at alternatives to SharePoint Online ACS. So for a lot of us, we probably know about the App Reg New page where you can come in and create a client ID and a client secret and use this to easily create a service account, an app principal identity for connecting to SharePoint Online. These things are fantastic. They're easy to make. You simply go to App Reg New and a few minutes later you're in business. However, Microsoft has announced that it will no longer be creating these and it will be retiring. So we want to start looking towards a long-term pattern and they have good reasons for the retirement. You can learn more about it here in the article. They go through all of the different details. But basically we're looking for something more secure with long-term support. And this method, as much as I like it for the convenience, is something we need to start practicing differently. We need to practice other ways to connect to our SharePoint Online site. So let's say you've got a SharePoint list and you want to create some new item and you want to do a hello world and we want to put that onto a list. But maybe we want to automate and come in through an API, PowerShell PMP or something else. So if you wanted to come in through PowerShell PMP, you want to connect to your site, you really like making client ID in secret, what do you do? What's the replacement? If this is on the way out, what's the new thing on the way in? So the long-term replacement is going to be with Azure's app registration. So here we can come to the Azure portal and we can look up app registration and get a listing of all the applications that we currently have on our particular intra, Azure AD. And here we're looking at eight applications, but we want to hit new, make our own, or better yet, we go over to PowerShell and let it do the hard work of making our own. Now for that, I have a script ready to go. So here we are looking at a couple different articles for references. These provide some background on the assumptions that we're working with. And so here we have a couple of different things we'll go through on our assumptions. Now in our assumptions section, we have articles that for the assumptions section, we can move into our scope or we can with the name of our tenant, we give it a password. This goes to the certificate that we're creating. It's more of the private key that goes with the public key of the certificate, but this will be part of our certificate PFX work. The tenant itself, this is something we can get from the Azure AD portal. It's the whatever.onmicrosoft.com. That's going to be your, your tenant name. And then for certificate name, that's simply a local file name that went ahead and declared with a suffix. So if we come on down a little further, the operative command here is to register the app. We give it a name, we tell it what tenant it's for, we give it a password, and we let it log in to do the registration for us. So executing this command is what's going to do the heavy lifting of creating a new app in the Azure AD portal. And when that app is created, we should see a new line item here. And this is going to be the new register from the PMP PowerShell. So let's go ahead and execute. and We'll move forward from there. Uh, execute our scope lines to declare those. Wonderful. We'll go ahead and execute the secure password. F8 is a good way to do that. And for some reason, string was missing. We will add that back in. There we go. Beautiful. So now we've got all of our inputs ready. We'll go ahead and do the register PMP app and execute that one. It will create a pop-up window for login. And that is where we're going to go ahead and log in to Azure AD. With the pop-up window completed, we get a message down here. It's kind of interesting. It says success. The name of the app can be registered. Does not exist yet. App created. Waiting 30 seconds to launch consent flow. Okay, cool. So there's a little bit of a delay to allow it for processing. And we will get a pop-up window for a consent flow. So this is kind of interesting. It gives us the name of the app and that it would like to do all of these different permissions. Now, what I find interesting about this is that we're going to want to modify this part. Full control of all site collections, that means everything SharePoint Online. We can change this to sites.selected and make that modification after the fact. So I personally view benefits in using the wizard, using the GUI because of the quality and the ease of use. This is super easy stuff, only takes a moment to get started, and then we can tighten it up 
and provide which URLs and a following step. But right here, I mean, this is actually going to be everything that's in SharePoint Online. Uh, if we replace that with sites.selected, then we can give the URLs and be more specific about it. So sites.selected, great way to do things. But we'll go ahead and move forward with the consent screen, allow it to register, come back and tighten that up. So with that part completed, we're going to go ahead and write our client ID out to a file. And if you want to see it on the command line, just go ahead and highlight some stuff and hit F8. We see our GUID down here. This is our new client ID GUID. That's really the same thing that we used to be getting from at Bridge New, right? That that used to give us a client ID. Well, now we have a different way of getting our client ID. Not that bad. Couple lines of code, we have a client ID number. Pretty cool stuff. So here we can go ahead and take this forward. All right, and with our app successfully registered, we're gonna pop over to the Azure portal, refresh, and take a look at what we have. So we now have a new item listed coming over to all applications. There it is, SPO AZ, SPO AZ App Ridge. Now we can see, we can see we have our new app registered and it comes under the name. We can see we have our new app registered, comes under the name SPOAZ App Reg SP Jeff Dev, which is the name of our tenant, matching up to the top right corner here for the on Microsoft.com. And with that, if we come into client IDs and certificates, we can see that secrets are at zero, which is okay for what we're doing here. But we do have a certificate, it has a thumbprint, it has a CN equals, an expiration date, security, all that good stuff. Coming down to API permissions, we can see it has lots of cool stuff, including uh, sites full control all, all sites full control, that's the whole tenant. So this did a lot for us. It set up five permission grants, it set up a certificate, it set up the name, and it made sure to turn on all the smaller settings correctly, right? Like we have different things in the manifest about how the application should be registered and how it can be worked how it can be exposed, can it be run through the command line, can it be run through web interface. There's some interesting stuff here about you know, how it supports mobile and desktop redirection, single tenant, uh, and allow public client flows as a yes. So when we're doing that register command, it's actually setting up a lot of stuff in the background for us and making it reliable, making it scalable. And the client ID ends with 069 over here. If we come back to our code and take a look at what was written to our text file, we can see that is a perfect match. That is our new client ID and also known as an app ID. And that was registered very easily with one command. Only reason we're even doing this text file thing is just to write down our client ID so that we can pick it up down here and then use it again for our next logon, right? We want to use it for future login, so we're saving it as a text file in a persisted way. So now that we have all that written down, let's go ahead and pick up the text file, take a look at it, echo back the contents, make up a file name, there it is, looks pretty good. Do a dir statement on the folder. So we have our PowerShell script that we've been working on. We know about that, that's the item that we currently have open. But we generated a certificate, which is pretty cool. And we also wrote a GUID number to a text file so that we can reference our client ID kind of easily into the future. So with all that in place, if we come down here, we know what our client ID is, we know what a file name is, we'll go ahead and make a connection. And it worked. It worked. Wow. Because now we can do get PMP context. And we have a connection into PMP. Pretty cool. We can run stuff like get PMP web and it echoes back the web we're connected to. Also pretty cool. And we can even do stuff like write down a URL, write down the name of a list, make a connection, add a list item. We're adding the word test. We're adding it to a list called test. And if we come back into our site and we refresh our list, there it is, test item, successfully written, so cool, 
and we did that using an Azure app registration. We did not need the app reg new. It wasn't really part of what we we're doing. We we're able to use the Azure app registration to take care of everything. And as far as showing and hiding columns, if we bring on some additional details to show hide, you can see that it was created by SharePoint app. And that is the identity that we're going for, the app principle. And that app principle comes from Azure AD. This client ID right here, 069, which matches back up with what we have in our text file. If you remember from our client ID being written over here in the earlier steps. So, I mean, really we're looking at basically two key commands. One is register the app and two is connect. It's really not that hard. And yeah, you know, in the past connect had three parameters, URL, client ID, and secret. Okay, is this really different? We're doing URL, client ID, we're handing it a password. So those are the same three inputs that we've always had for parameters. But now we're just adding the name of our tenant and the name of a PFX file. We're, we're adding two more from what we were always used to. So it's a five parameter instead of three. It's not that hard. And for registration, we're giving it a descriptive name. We give it a tenant and password. So that's three inputs that we need to register. That's not that hard. I mean, most people memorize the tenant name, use it so much. We make up a password for our certificate that, I mean, this would be like our team only is the one that knows about it. So it's a level of privacy that's pretty good stuff. And this is really for, I mean, it's for company-wide support. We're, we're letting everyone know. We're, we're sort of advertising centrally that we do have an application. So I think there's a lot of benefits to this strategy. There's a lot of upside to it. Uh, you know, it is a new technique to learn. It may take a little bit more effort uh, in the early days to get used to it. But in running this register command, we can make an app registration very easily and only with a few inputs. We always had to do a, a password, a client ID, but now we're giving it a, an application name, something descriptive so our coworkers can see it. And other people can find it. It's described, it's a known quantity. You can put internal notes, you know? You can put something like questions, you know? Ask John at support.com or whatever. Like, there's things we can do to make this more descriptive. Um, you can put terms of service URL, privacy statement, homepage URL, upload a logo, put in notes. I mean, these are things that allow us to describe the purpose and to describe the support contacts. We had no way of doing that with the old app reg new, did we? App reg new, it didn't cover that it didn't really cover support. And that's one of the reasons we want to move away from it. I like it. I thought it was great. It's easy to use. Only took a few seconds. This one, this one works better long term. It has a lot of upside. So give it a try. Share the video with your admins if you need directions on how to do the app registration. But really it comes down to these two key commands, the register command and then the connect. And if you can work the two of those, you can easily use this new pattern for the long term even when Microsoft retires the old interface. Thanks for watching.